you a little bit about our, our new house museum. This house has had four owners over the years, the uh, Mizells, the Pells, the Woodwards, and the Loos. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know Hey, I wish you could see yourself
that you loved What if your sweetness could reach everyone There'd be no wars be happy how many times do you have to feel lonely before you get the chance to meet someone before you get to meet someone like you how many songs can you write about heartbreak how to go when you're fed up let me tell you a little bit about our, our new house museum this house has had four owners over the years the uh, Mizells, the Pells, the Woodwards, and the Lews. The Lews being the final owners and donors of the property deeding into the city of Orlando in 1961. Now, getting back to our pioneer family, Angeline Mizell staked out the still wild property around 1858 while her husband, David, um, was off doing other things, finishing up um, with some business he needed to take care of. Rancher kind of knew where he would be so he assembles a small posse and heads southeast towards Keenansville. And of course, never found that rancher. Now the posse is headed home, headed north, through Holopa, where just north of Hol Holopa at Bull Creek, David is ambushed and killed. The only sheriff in the state of Florida to have been killed in the line of duty. Yeah. Now the Mizells, um, John Thomas, he does marry. He begins his family and decides that he wants to build a new farmhouse for his new family. That's what inspires him to build our home, completing it in 1888, moving in with his wife, his two daughters, and his mother, Angeline. And the Mizells are here for quite a while. They're here until 1901 when they sell the property to our second family, Duncan Pell and his future wife, Helen Gardner Pell. Now, Duncan Pell, if you've heard of Pell Grants, it is this Pell family. It will be a cousin of du Duncan's who institutes those grants. But Duncan isn't the philanthropist that his cousin is. Duncan is a polo playing, social register, wealthy New York. Nice way to say he's a playboy. <laughs> Duncan, um, even though he lives in New York, often comes to Orlando in the winter months to play polo. Now it's 1901 and Florida has been one of a handful of states and has enacted some very lenient divorce laws for property owners. And it just so happens that they built a polo field right across the street from our property. And Duncan has also met a very young Helen Gardner at one of the saloons here in Orlando and fallen madly in love. So wouldn't you know, timing is right. He purchases this property and begins his divorce proceedings from his first wife, who still lives in New York. Now, it takes about a year for those divorce proceedings to finalize. Things went a little slower back in those days. So while they're waiting for that divorce to happen, and they know they're not going to be using this house for about a year, Duncan hires the original builder, John Mizell, to make the addition of our mass, uh, library, a master bedroom above the library, and an iron that we'll see in just a few minutes. When you're fed up with mistakes, maybe I just found the answers. Maybe I just found the answers in you.
I got you, we don't have to stay We can do what we want to Just give a little bit of your heart Give a little bit of your heart to me
Like everything 